Welcome to the PTM 4.90 What's New video. My name is Christoph Engelen. I'm the product manager of the Testorno 600. And today we're going to have a look at the most important features of the new version. With PTM 4.90, we have introduced a new accessory to the Testorno 600. The Vibroacoustic 1 module allows to perform vibroacoustic measurements on on-load tap changers. With this method, the vibration pattern of each tap changer operation can be recorded and analyzed and checked for mechanical deviations in the tap changer. In the test list, we can now find the Vibroacoustic plus ODC scan test, which is an offline test, and the Vibroacoustic or VAM online test. For now, we will focus on the offline variation. So we select the Vibroacoustic plus ODC scan test, add it to our test list, and jump right into the test. Inside the Vibroacoustic measurement test, we can see on top the connection diagram, which shows the Testorno 600 that is connected to all transformer terminals. And in addition, we can also see the Vibroacoustic 1 module, which is connected via the EtherCAD connection to the Testorno 600. In addition, the connection diagram gives some recommendations where to place the sensors, in this case, the green marked area on the right side of the transformer or the OTC cover are recommended. Going down to the settings, we can see that those are very similar to the single phase DRM tests, including the test current and output mode and the option to record the motor supply current. We can select how the trap control is operating, so we can select the start and the top, uh, stop tap of the measurement. And new to this test on the right hand side is the sensor configuration. Here we can decide how many sensors are used for our measurement. Now in this case all three sensors are active and in this text field we can give individual descriptions. Now let's have a look at some measurement results. Inside the measurement tab for each recorded tap curve, four diagrams are shown. The first one is the frequency time diagram, which shows the frequency content over the whole recording time. And by using this color coding, we can identify areas of high signal activity. The second one, which is used for comparison and the main curve for analysis is the so-called envelope curve. It will show basically the the energy of the signal during the whole recording time, indicating here, for example, the diverter switch operation. Additionally, for offline tests, we can see the dynamic resistance measurement or the dynamic current curve in this case. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we will also see the motor supply current. In order to analyze the curves, first of all, we can zoom in on different parts of the recording time. To do so, we can, for example, use our frequency time diagram and select the region we're interested in. Now, we can start to analyze the different timings of, for example, the envelope curve in this case, by activating our cursors. Therefore, we open our cursor tab, select up to 12 cursors, in this case, let's pick three. And now we can start positioning the cursors on relevant parts of the envelope curve. The same also applies for the dynamic current curve and the motor current. Finally, when we are navigating to the comparison tab, we can select any curve in our PTM database and use it as reference data for comparison. In this case, we can see in red and blue the two envelope curves, which are lined up in the top graph. And then below, we can see as well the dynamic current curve and as well the motor supply current. In addition, we can also make use of our cursors and select up to 12 cursors to place them in our graphs and start analyzing the timings. With PTM 4.90, we have added a three-phase output option to the existing dynamic OTC scan measurement for the Test 600. On the one hand, this allows to reduce the testing time as all three phases are tested simultaneously. And in addition, 
the user can now analyze any deviations in timings regarding all three phases. To add the test to our test list, we simply go to add selected test and we will see the test is added to our test list and now we can jump directly into this test. Inside the test, we can now see that in addition to the original single phase output mode, we have now also a three phase output mode available. So if we activate this, we can enter the test current for our test. We can apply dynamic shorting to the opposite side of our OLTC and we can enter the tap control settings to operate on the tap changer. When we press start and the measurement starts to record the current uh, curves, we will see the dynamic current curves at the bottom. And if we also record the motor supply below here, we will see the motor supply current. So let's have a look at some measurement results. In this view, the results of the dynamic current curve and the motor supply current are shown. In the first diagram on the top, we can see the recordings of the three phases, A, B and C, and below we can see the motor supply current. First, let's focus on the dynamic current curves. As we can see, the whole tap switch operation range has been recorded continuously and is depicted in this upper diagram here. So if you were to pick out one of the tap switch operations and zoom in, like so, we can now see the individual tap switch operations of all three phases in red, yellow and blue. And now we can also decide to show all three curves as an overlay, which means all of them will be depicted on top of each other. And if we zoom in, we can see there's a slight time shift between the phases. And at this point, we can make use of our cursors. We can select up to 12 cursors and place them, for example, on the beginning of each tap switch operation to measure out the timings. If we do so, and we are content with the results, we can press Save as new result to add a new snapshot to our result list. The new result is now added to our snapshot list on the left hand side. We can decide if we want to rename it, for example, like tap from tap position 4 to number 5. And if we were to zoom out and see the whole curve, we have now the option to directly go back to this tap switch operation by simply double clicking on the result and zooming back on this exact same tap position, including also the cursor placement. Similar to the dynamic current curves, we can also analyze the motor supply currents. So if we zoom out again to see the whole tap switch operation range, we can see that all motor current activity has been recorded at the bottom diagram. And if we were to zoom in, for example, on one of the curves, we can see the motor supply current. And now we can use again the cursors to measure out the timings of the motor supply current. I hope you enjoyed this short introduction to the new features of PTM 4.90. The best way to experience them is of course to try them out yourself. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact our tech support. Thank you very much for your attention and have a good day.